grow watt settings. Now I've been asked how I set my grow watt, so I figured I'd pull out the instructions, have the faceplate here showing, and explain to you how I set up my grow watt. So right off the bat, you have four buttons on the front. You have your escape or back button, up, down, and enter. So first off, I will go into the settings. So the way I have mine set is solar first. So what this does is when solar energy is not available to run the loads, then it'll run off the battery. And if the battery isn't sufficient to run the load after that, then your unit will shut down. And next setting you have, if you wanna change that, you press and hold enter. And then you will go, the next setting is, this is utility setting. So the utility will provide the power to the load first. And then if utility goes out, then the grow watt will take over with solar and battery. If you choose SBU priority, solar energy will provide the power to the load first. And if it's not sufficient, then the battery power will take over. And then if the battery power is not enough, then it will go to the grid for power. I keep mine in solar priority because I am not hooked up to the grid. So your next setting is gonna be your maximum charging current. Uh, you can set this for your gauge of wire. This is gonna be the solar and the internal charger combined power. So I have mine set to 60 amps. I wanna keep my batteries at uh, a low temperature. So I find that 80 amps heats up the batteries a little bit too much for me. So setting number three, I have mine set to appliance, which is the default setting. And then you also have a UPS or a generator setting. Now setting number four is power saving mode. And basically what this does is if there's no load on the inverter, it will lower the amount of standby consumption and it'll send pulses out to see if it picks up on a load. And once it picks up on a load, then it will fire up the inverter. Don't find this very handy, just because if you have a fridge or something and it goes to click on, uh, this won't see it and your fridge won't turn the inverter on. Next setting is very important. I'm using lithium iron phosphate. Uh, my BMS does not communicate with the grow watt. So I actually need to use user setting instead of the LI setting for lithium. A lot of people get confused here. Unless you have a BMS that communicates with the grow watt, uh, you're gonna need to use the user mode. Uh, they also have AMG, which you can use for lithium. They have some good presets and then they have flooded as well. But if you use user mode, you can set the parameters on your own. Uh, next, we have auto restart when an overload occurs. So if you overload this unit, put too many watts through it and it shuts down, then it'll wait a certain amount of time and then restart. Uh, number seven is auto restart when temperature occurs. So if the internal temperature of this unit goes with outside of the parameters, uh, you can have it auto restart after that fault has occurred. Uh, output voltage, I'm here in North America, so I'm using 120 volts. And I also use a frequency of 60 hertz. So this setting here uh, is for number of battery in series. This is a 24 volt system. So I just have mine set to two batteries. And number 11 here is maximum utility charging. So this is when you have your unit grid tied. Uh, it's default 30 amps. I have mine set to 60. And then if you remember the previous setting for the maximum for the grid tie and solar, I also have that turned down to 60 as well. That's just my preference. And you can also go off of your wire gauge size to your battery in order to set this so that you don't overload your wire conductors. This is the setting voltage point back to utility source. So basically what'll happen is if I go below 23 volts, then the utility, if I was connected to the grid, would charge the batteries. Number 13 is the voltage set point back to battery mode. So it will charge from 23 volts back up to 26.8, and then it will stop charging off the grid and return back to battery mode or solar, whichever one is available. 
So number 14, I have mine set to SNU, which is solar energy and utility will both charge the batteries. Uh, I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to change this setting so that it goes to solar first. So this way solar energy will charge the uh, batteries first as priority and then the utility will charge the batteries only when the solar energy is not available. So if I go below that 23 volts then the utility will kick on if the solar is not suffice. And then this here is the alarm on. So this is whenever you press a button it's going to go beep beep beep. So I just turn mine off right away. Uh, number 16 is the backlit control. You can either have it backlit or not. I like to have a backlit and it usually goes out after a certain amount of time and you have to press enter and hold it for a couple seconds for it to turn back on. And then beeps when primary source is interrupted. So if I was grid tied and the grid went down, it would give off a beep. Overload bypass, when enabled, the unit will transfer line mode if overload occurs in the battery mode. So if the batteries get overloaded, it'll transfer to utility mode. So this setting here, this is for your charging of your battery. So for my lithium iron phosphate batteries, I have this set to 28.8 volts. And after it hits that, it'll shut down. This is my float voltage. Lithium iron phosphate, you don't really need float. Uh, so what this does is it'll charge up my batteries to the 28.8, and then it won't continue charging until I come down to 27. But with lithium iron phosphate, it'll only settle down a, a little bit, and then it won't actually settle down to 27 volts. It probably settled down to like 27.8 volts. So it doesn't really float if I was to charge my batteries right up and then disconnect the inverter, I won't have a, a voltage or a float voltage. And then this is my DC cutoff voltage. If the power supply source isn't available, the inverter will shut down. So my inverter will stop creating power at 24 volts, which is my bottom end voltage of my lithium batteries. Solar power balance when enabled, solar input power will be automatically adjusted according to the connected load. So this is going to, if my batteries are fully charged and there's enough sun to run the load, then it will adjust the solar power coming into the load that's being run. I'm going to skip over to setting 28 because I don't have uh, another unit in parallel. So those settings don't apply. They don't even show up right now. 28 address setting. I believe this is to set up for to have multiple inverters. So we don't need to do that. Uh, battery equalization, I actually have this mode uh, disabled because I'm using lithium iron phosphate so there is no equalization needed on these batteries. And these are just the equalization settings. And that's it. Uh, so that's how I have my inverter set up for my lithium iron phosphate. Uh, there's different settings, default settings for either AMG or flooded lead acid. I would just use those preset and if you have a battery that communicates with your grow watt even better. If there is any companies out there that uh, supply units that can communicate with the grow watt, I'll hopefully be doing a video on that in the distant future. But for now, this is the way I have my setup. If this video helped you out, please check out some of my other ones. They go through how to do some DIY combiner boxes, as well as I do a few battery builds from raw lithium iron phosphate cells. If you like this video, as always, leave a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.